Hello and welcome back to the Pro Football Historian channel. My name is Flynn Gibbon, and if this is your first time, welcome to the channel. Uh, we're gonna, just going to go over all the games coming up this week, weekend and preview them. Obviously, we just talked about last night before that. Uh, it was a pretty exciting game. You could say both teams had missed opportunities to score more points. Chargers could have got possibly if, basically three chances near the one-yard line and didn't get anything. And they had another drive where they were around like the 20, 25 and didn't get anything is either. And Kansas City had one drive where they went, you know, four and out near the end zone. So there's just plenty of opportunities. They're obviously the Chargers are a lot more. And uh, losing in overtime, you know, one drive for Chiefs, touchdown. Uh, for the Chargers, basically at this point, you, you would say it's kind of just the wild card. And that's really it. And it's going to be tough even getting the wild card at eight and six right now. You know, you got Buffalo. You know, they're going to be favored in their game. Uh, there's a few other teams. You got, you got the whole AFC North, basically. Um, you know, other than that, like, right now I think they're in. But, you know, losing that game, and, you know, the division's kind of out of the question now. I doubt the Chiefs are going to fall through much, if any. So it's really, you're looking at the fifth, sixth, or seventh seed. Um, I think they're a good team. They're cons inconsistent at times, but they're looking better lately. Um, you know, if they can make the playoffs, you know, that's a, a rel relatively dangerous team. The run defense hasn't been as bad. And I don't know if that's Linville Joseph coming back or just, you know, two games, small sample size. We'll see. I guess we'll move on to uh, the Saturday game. The Browns and Raiders. And I guess before I keep going, there's been a lot of COVID stuff going on the last uh, you know, week. So we don't even know who's playing in what game. So I will try, I will try to assume who's playing or it's going to be tough. But I might just have to assume their full their full goes all both teams just to kind of guess on who I think is going to win. But really, my I'm just giving you a good analysis on what could happen, not necessarily who might win. But okay, let's, again, let's go on the Raiders Browns. To me, the Browns are the better team. The Raiders have struggled down the stretch. They really have had one good game of offense against Dallas. Other than that, you know, not a lot going on for the Raiders. They might get Darren Waller back. We'll see. The Browns, I know they've had a lot of COVID and injuries. They don't have their head coach, I believe, coming up. They're probably going to have to go to uh, the third-string quarterback and Nick Mullins. Obviously, we've seen some games with Nick Mullins. He did not look good in preseason for the Eagles this year. Not that that means too much, but you know, a lot of people would say Kyle Shanahan was made him look even decent if you wouldn't want to call it that decent, the stretches he played for them. So playing with Cleveland, I would just expect them to run it a lot. They have a lot of good running backs. If any of them get COVID, I don't know. But, you know, whoever's in, you know, as long as their line's relatively intact, they should be okay. They should win that game. They're home. They need the win. The Raiders, obviously, they need to win every game to have a shot, but. I, if I had to pick, I'm going with Cleveland. I just had more faith in them. Even though they've been – obviously, both teams have been inconsistent this year. That's what happened. Most teams have been inconsistent, at least at some time in the season or some stretches, especially when you're, you know, hovering around 500. Uh, but, again, I think – I have more trust in Cleveland. I think they're a better team, more talented. Even with the COVID stuff, I think they should win. They're home. Let's move on to the next Saturday game. Another good good game. Get the Patriots and Colts. Um, you know, these teams have really good strengths. Like the Patriots defense is great. Pretty good run game. Mac Jones, you know, takes care of the ball for the most part. And he does what he needs to on a daily basis, you know, weekly basis. And then when they call upon him, he usually performs well. The Colts, uh, other than the rough stretch at the beginning of the year, blowing a few games maybe, say against Tampa and the Raiders and stuff like that, 
they looked fairly well. You know, some games, you know, they've had a close game against Jacksonville, I know. Uh, I, if I had to just pick an upset, I don't know if who's favored. I would assume New England, or maybe it's like one point either way. Uh, I, I would lean with the cold. I just, I'm still not totally sure of the New England run defense. It's better than la- previous years, the last two years, I would say, because they just had more bigger guys up front to stop the run. And I know the Col- oh, the Patriots are going to try to eliminate Jonathan Taylor. But I think there's enough where Wentz can, you know, maybe throw around 200 yards, take care of the ball, and the run game can do enough just since I think they can push around the Patriots' defensive line even if they're the best in the league. We've seen the Titans and other teams run the ball fairly well. Um, I know the Titans is a little different. It was a little unique situation because they just knew each other so well. But again, the Colts offense is kind of clicking. They know the receivers are not great. They're kind of like the Eagles Super Bowl run. Frank Wright, you know, he has Wentz again. And they're very efficient. They're, if you look at their offense, I think they're like 30 yards. You should be surprised if you're looking at the, the town on that offense. It's not like amazing or anything. So if I had to go, I think there, this could be an upset. You know, not that New England's do or anything. They've been one seven straight. Just if I had to, just, I just have a feeling on that game. Even though if you wanted to go safe, I would completely understand picking New England. Next team, Buffalo and the Panthers. Panthers have really struggled down the stretch. Uh, if you know, look at the rest of the schedule, I think they have the hardest remaining schedule in terms of you know record. Uh, so they might lose every game, and that means Cam Newton might go zero and fifteen in his last fifteen starts with the Panthers. Which that's just <laughs> that's surprising and just kind of crazy if you think about it. Again, more faith in Buffalo, more talent. They need it. Obviously, Carolina definitely needs it too, but I, I I would have to see the Panthers do something or, or shock me to start picking them again because they just probably going to be underdogs in every game the rest of the way and have not looked good at all. Defensively at times, they definitely have, but offensively, it's may, they start off fast sometimes and then just do nothing the rest of the game. Moving on, the next game is going over as quick. Uh, I think we're all going to pick Arizona if we had to pick this game. Uh, I don't know, what, again, if it's a, there's probably a lot of points involved. Probably multiple touchdowns, so or we should say a couple maybe in terms of spread. Uh, Arizona, I know they had a loss against the Rams Monday. Should win this game. I know last year, if you think about it, Detroit did, I think it was week three, did win against Arizona in, I think, Arizona. Murray threw three interceptions, I believe. So, I mean, there's that slight possibility if you were going to pick an upset, but, again, Arizona should win. They should move to 11-3. Next game, uh, basically, who is probably going to be the number two pick in the draft? That's this game. Uh, For the year, I picked Jacksonville to win this game. I did pick Houston to win the week one game. Had them splitting the series. And that's just my logic here. I, they fire their coach. Maybe something changes in Jacksonville where maybe they give you one good week of football. You get Davis Mills again for the Texans. I think the even though the stats say Davis Mills played better, I think uh, Jacksonville is a little bit more town. I know the depth and the, there's less holes on the Texans, if per se, compared to the Jags. But I think there's a little bit more talent and they can make more explosive plays than the Texans. So that's my lobby there. Moving on, Dolphins, Jets. Picked, I will pick the Dolphins to win this game. I think the defense is playing really well, good in the, down the stretch. And they're playing Zach Wilson. I think they might be able to force a few mistakes. Wilson has played a little bit better. I know stats and PFF and all that kind of slam Zach Wilson. You know, this is a hard evaluation this year with the team around him and that the backups sometimes look better than him. 
I think you know he could be pressed, and we don't we have no clue. We have to give him more than a year. But in this game, I just will pick the Dolphins. Way more faith in them, and they still they're on a winning streak. Won the last five, last five games, I believe. So uh, they're the fourth team to ever do that after lose, starting one and seven. So I don't think they'll win this game. Moving on, Dallas Giants. We've seen Dallas. Uh, Dallas has handled the Giants in recent years. I know there was an the Giants have won one game last year against them, and then Dak Prescott. That's rookie year. They won twice. That was is just way, way more explosive, way better team. Even though they're not playing their best football right now, Giants. I'm gonna. We have no clue who the quarterback will be. Guessing it'll be Glennon, but it could be Daniel Jones. Again, I think Dallas will win that game. This game, I think Washington at full strength would be the better team, but uh, well, I think they have like 21 players on COVID. 13 on injured reserve. Eagles just have two guys on COVID. And really, this Quez Watkins only concern for the Eagles COVID-wise that I know of. So that's my logic here. I will actually think the Eagles will win this game just because they're home. They have, you know, they're full strength, it seems. And the Washington football team, uh, they aren't. So... They play again, so I, I will assume they'll split it. Even though I picked Washington to win both before the year, I just think right now it's really hard to know what uh, Washington will be doing in this game. I, I trust Ron Rivera to find some kind of game plan that might work for them. He might run the ball a lot, but again, Eagles, both teams need it, but I think the Eagles will find a way because, you know, the Washington just might have Deron Payne on the defensive line. That might be the only like starter or even depth player. They might have to get, get people off the street just to play this game. We'll see. You're just going to be having to find fourth and fifth stringers to play. Uh, Steelers, Titans. I, I'm just going to have more faith in the Titans. Steelers defense really hasn't played well recently. I don't know the health of J, uh, TJ Watt. Uh, I would guess he played, but I haven't looked at the injury report. Uh, and the, I think the Titans are just a better team. I know if they Derek Henry, I definitely would pick them, but makes it a tougher decision. Steelers are desperate. Sometimes when you count out the Steelers are the team, you know, that just finds a way to win. I expect this to be a close game. I could see either team winning this. I just – this could be it. This could be the first losing season of the Steelers. You know, they got four more games to play. Uh, they got a very tough schedule. I'm going to pick them to lose this. I'm going to pick Tennessee to win that game. Again, should be a very good game, though. And this, this other game, next game, should be pretty good as well. Uh, Cincinnati and Denver. I think Cincinnati is the better team, but I, this could be an upset. I just see a lot of... I see, like, the Denver defense, I can just see how they can have – can make it really hard for Joe Burrow in the run game with Joe Mixon. Um, going into the week, I was just like, oh, you know, Cincinnati's a more talented team, the better team. They should win. But Denver's home. They – defensively, they're really good. And I, I could see how – like, last week, four nights, got kind of got a pass rush against – Cincinnati for the, for most of the game. And they don't have the corner issues, and they're just a better defense than the 49ers right now, I think. It's way more talented, I think, in the secondary at least. And Joe Burrow is still a young quarterback. I just see him can make a few of the mistakes. Uh, again, hard to – Denver's offense, I have no clue what it's going to do. So that's a concern, but – this should be a very close game. I'm going to pick Denver, but I don't really have faith in picking Denver. They've been one of the most inconsistent teams this year. But that's just my thinking on that game. Next game, 49ers, Falcons. Record-wise, are close, but the 49ers should win this game. I think they're a better team. should be really no reason the Falcons win this game. 
other than the 49ers turning over the ball, like maybe in the Seattle game they did. Uh, no other comment really on this game. They should be their win. Falcons need it, though, just like the 49ers. I think the 49ers have a little bit more room since their schedule is a little bit easier. And they really just need to win two out of the next four to probably make the playoffs. Where the Falcons probably need to win at least three, if not all four. Going on the next game, I actually will be at this game. And it's the Packers and Ravens. Uh, again, I haven't looked at the spread who's favorite. I would think the Ravens by like one or something. But I could see Green Bay being it. Uh, I expect the Packers to win. I don't see many ways the Ravens win unless they're just offense can figure out a way against the Packers' good defense. Maybe because they have they play Justin Fields. So that's the closest thing, other than Kyle Murray, maybe that they played against Lamar Jackson. Maybe even Lamar plays, assuming he's going to play though. Uh, they haven't really played that running style, running quarterback. But Ravens' offense, if you look at it, a little bit better receiving core in recent years. But this, the running game isn't. It's really just Lamar. Like the, Devontae Freeman's, he's like a third string running back at the start point. And he doesn't make much plays. He gets what's usually there. And the Ravens' offensive line isn't that great with the injuries they've had. And defensively, like I assume they're just going to try to stop, stop the run like they usually do and do a lot of blitzing. But with the Packers, they can do everything. And you would think they could take advantage of some of these backup corners. I mean, maybe they could slow down the run, which can make it in one dimensional. But you're still, you know, Aaron Rodgers in that passing attack. I really, Green Bay should win this game. I think Ravens, and I would have been saying this one even when they're eight and three. This might be one of the worst eight and three teams I've seen, and it's not. It's mostly because of injury, injuries and stuff like that. They were at full strain like before the year, before or they got the running backs hurt and all that and the corners. I have no problem saying, okay, the Ravens should be a 12 11 win team. But if they lose this, still got Cincinnati, got Pittsburgh. They already lost to those teams. You know, they split with Cleveland. Like, it's not looking good. Uh, you know, they got some help, you know, the Chargers losing. So, even if they fall out of the, you know, the divisional, like winning the division, you could still fall in a wild card spot for now and still be there. Uh, again, I just think Green Bay in the passing game is going to find, they're going to be able to just move the chains consistently. Uh, they might even have a chance to get some deep shots in Marcos Valdez scantling. Because I just think their receivers, even at times you could say the Green Bay's receivers are not the greatest, other than maybe Devontae Adams. They are probably better than the Ravens' corners. Just if you think about it with the depth that they you know lost, they're basically on their fourth, fifth, and sixth corner, kind of. And I just don't I don't see that working. And maybe they play the, the style they did in week two against the Chiefs where they play a lot of coverage and stuff like that. But Green Bay has a great running game. So, again, I just don't I don't really see many ways the Ravens win that game. Uh, this game, I think Seattle could make it close. I think their record is better. They're better than their record. is just because the Wilson injury and then Wilson playing through injury. And there's been other things. Their defense wasn't great the first half of the year, kind of like last year. But it's got better. And if you remember the one game when – Russell did get hurt this year. Geno Smith came in. They had shots at making it a game. And it still was a game, honestly. So I, I will pick the Rams. I think they should win this. They need to win it. Kind of, I should say they don't need to win it, but they want to get a higher seed than the fifth. And maybe win the division. They should win this game and need it. Sunday night. This is really tough for me because – I always picked the Saints against the Bucks the last two years, and they came out other than the playoff game to win it. Uh, and just looking back, it's surprising they even won the last game with uh, Trevor Simeon. And I don't know if I'm going to see Brady make those mistakes, but remember last year, 
It was his worst defeat in his career, Tom Brady. He threw, I think, zero touchdown, three picks. He's made mistakes against the Saints, and the Saints are desperate. I think it's really tough. I, like, if definitely if I'm getting, if you're playing with the spread, I would consider the Saints. I'm assuming I would, they're definitely on the rug, I would assume. So I'd probably would just take the point. I actually am going to pick the Saints, even though I'm not confident at all that they'll win this game. I would like to see Tampa Bay win one of these games against New Orleans in the regular season. Uh, and they really haven't played Taysom Hill, so that's another factor. No, really don't know how that's going to turn out if Taysom Hill can move the ball and how they stop, you know, the Saints. The thing is, the, the Josh Allen is, has some qualities like Taysom Hill. So maybe the Saints, you know, Josh Allen ran the ball a lot and got over 100 yards. So very well, Taysom Hill could do something similar. Now to the Monday night game, last game we'll talk about. Vikings-Bears. Uh Vikings should win this game, but that doesn't mean much for the Vikings. They can let any team beat them, and they can beat any team. Uh, for the Bears, you know, you just want to see uh, Justin Fields improve. You want to see some, hopefully, wins end of this year, unless you're like one of those people who just wanted them to lose, get the higher pick, and want Maggie fired. Maggie, I should say. Uh, but honestly, I think you want, you just want to see improvement. This should be a relatively close game. Vikings usually keep it close anyway. But if you're a Vikings fan, you kind of want to see them start winning the games they should and winning them convincingly. Uh, don't I don't really have anything else to say. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, if, maybe I should add the injury report next time like I did last week. Let me know if you have any more suggestions. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And... Uh, I'll be back on Tuesday to recap the weekend. Uh, see you later and bye.